Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today, I will show you how to achieve the following effect with Webflow nav bars. So as you can see, as I'm scrolling down, the nav bar disappears. And as I'm scrolling back up, it comes back into view. That's really a nice user experience because you have enough space to show your new content entering the viewport. But at the same time, users don't have to sc scroll all the way up access the navigation again or all the way down to navigate to other pages on your site so uh, that really makes for a good user experience and it uh, works really smoothly using a technique that i've come up with it involves using custom code aka javascript in webflow and i'll give you a detailed breakdown about how the code actually works so that you can understand every part of it another detail to this is that the nav bar actually stays pinned if you have a mega menu that's open, for example, or that could really be any kind of drop down that you have in your nav. And also, um, it stays open if you have your mobile menu open on your side and leaves the screen again if you close your mobile menu. So let's jump right into Webflow and take a look at how this is built. So, as I mentioned previously, it's, uh, it involves using uh, some JavaScript code. And I've made sure that the JavaScript code is as um, secure as possible so that even if some elements are not um, in your project, you can like safely paste the code into your site settings. In this case, I just opened my um, page settings and pasted it here because that's where I'll show it to you for this tutorial. And you could also just paste it in each page, but really, the main benefit of my technique also compared to um, something that a lot of people have been doing, including me, um, that's what I used to do, was to just go into my um, Webflow page uh, interactions here, and then on page scrolled, just include like a nav bar move in and nav bar move out uh, here. So basically that we would like, um, move the the whole nav just when you're scrolling up or down and that works fine for one page even though it has downsides like for example you couldn't toggle it based on um the drop downs being open um or such so that's like a downside and also it's not a scalable approach because and also not an efficient approach because you would have to um go through the same flow of adding the page scrolled interaction on each single page um, and also adjust the offsets here because you can't just bulk edit it uh, for all pages. So in that case, I'll just uh, go ahead and delete the interaction of page scrolled here. Um, and yeah, let's dive right into the code. So basically, um, I'll just move my uh, camera so that I'm not in the way. Here, so that you can see everything. Um, so I'll paste my code here in the page settings. I've actually um, gone ahead and like done that already. So here we have the script. I'll just zoom in a little bit so that you can see better what I'm up to and I can give you a better walkthrough of the actual code. So as you can see, I've also left some comments in the, in the script. So that makes it like more understandable. I will, um, I think that I will provide um, a notion page or so something like that so that I can so that you can like also just copy the script and use it on your side um, and so basically first like we're waiting like for down content loaded which is not um, really necessary because it's like in front of the closing body tag so it will be loaded in um, anyways but at the same time if you want to paste this code somewhere else then this will make it uh, work anyway so that all your elements are loaded when the script is actually running then we're getting the nav bar. So in that case, we have the selector here, which is selecting the nav component, which is marked with the dot for a class. And then we have nav underscore component. So um, what that means is that if you have a, another class here on your nav, I'm using this uh, Webflow component here, you can see that the class here is nav component. So if you had a different class here, then you should adjust that properly so that it works um, for you as well. And it can actually find the nav bar we're looking uh, for. Just get this back into view. So next, um, we're just checking if the nav bar is even existing. And if it doesn't exist, then the script will just stop executing, which is like a safety uh, measure uh, 
so that you can like also just paste it in your page settings. And even if it might not, if the nav bar is not added to each page on your project, the code will still run smoothly. Um, or actually like it will just not run, it will stop here because the nav is not there. Um, so the next thing is that we're setting some base values that will be important for our um, for how the animation looks and more of these kind of technical details. So for example, we have the scroll threshold. Uh, the, the scroll thresh, the threshold is basically a viewport height um, percentage um, where you can define how much you have to scroll. Um, if we look at this, it basically defines how much we have to scroll down and back up in order to um, for the animation to trigger and for the navbar to leave and to come back into view. So if you wanted to leave quicker and come back quicker, you might want to um, set this a little bit lower, like for example, 0 0.06, but I find that 0 0.08 is actually a pretty good value for that. Then we have the animation duration, which is pretty straightforward for everyone using Webflow and pretty much everyone else too. <laughs> So that's the animation duration. Um, it's set to 0 0.4 seconds. That will just be set as a CSS transition down here, navbar style transition. So we're setting the transform transition with the specified duration here um, from the 0 0.4. Then we have the start threshold in REM. So REM is a unit, uh, won't go into too much detail here. It's basically, you can like experiment with the value here. And what it does basically is, as you see, if I start scrolling, it stays pinned to our view for a while until it goes away. So basically, um, we are defining how much room there is on top until um, the moving in and out actually starts triggering. And what is important also is that your, um, Nav component is actually set to sticky. I should have mentioned that a little bit earlier. So here in that case, it sticks to one RAM to the top. So we have a little bit of breathing breathing room to the top, but you could also set it to zero if you wanted it to really stick to the um, to the exact top. Same goes for mobile. We also have one RAM here. So now let's get back into the, uh, the actual uh, code um, review. So next thing is the mobile menu button. So we're getting the mobile nav button, which is just used then for the logic of, of like basically checking if your mobile menu is open for the animation um, of moving in and out, not to trigger if your mobile menu is open. That's like just another measure here. And then we got the drop down toggles. And this is an important part of the whole thing here, because as I um, showed you previously, the nav bar basically stays stick if your um, drop down is open in the nav, but only if you define it to be. So let's take a look at the nav here. We can see the drop down toggle here is marked with the attributes. Move my face away again. So this is marked with the attributes of drop down toggle equals true. So basically, each drop down toggle element that is marked with drop down toggle true in my code setup is marked as one drop down element that the code is listening for. So basically, if you have a drop down toggle and you mark it like this, then the nav bar won't move out of view, even if you're scrolling, as long as the not drop down is currently open. So basically, it checks for the open drop downs. So now the next thing um, won't be too much more code. This is just the calculations for the start th uh, threshold. Then we've got the setting the transition. And this is basically just uh, the code that is handling the logic if the mobile menu or drop downs are open. And then the code that is actually triggered whenever we are scrolling, whenever the scroll threshold pretty much is like, or in fact, it's uh, triggered whenever we're scrolling, but also then uh, with our scroll uh, threshold. Um, and this is basically like just calculating the differences, checking then if the menus are open and all of that stuff. I won't go into too much detail here, um, but it's like a pretty safe and secure setup for your, for your project. 
And also another detail that I want, wanted to mention is that we're actually moving the nav bar out a little bit more than it's uh, just its size, uh, the size of the nav itself, which means that uh, if you have a nav like that, that is actually not pinned to the direct top, but it actually has like some breathing space. In that case, like one rem to the top. So that's like the distance that we have to the top here. Um, that means that um, we want to move the nav a little bit more than just its height itself, because that's what the my code was initially designed for. Just move the nav uh, by its own height out of view but then it would like basically be just right out of view and if we actually have more space at the top here in our sticky um value just wanted to check if it's visible yeah um then it would still some part of it would still be in the screen so this little uh, part of the code that i just showed you which is um there um that factor here um, it's basically just adding two rem to the actual size of the nav itself to move it out more than just its own size. If um, you can like adjust and play around with this value, that's what I wanted to say. And also a little thing that you can also adjust is the easing here. I've just set it to ease out. That's the easing of the animation, but um, you can use whatever you want here. And that's pretty much it. Um, I hope that I was able to uh, give you a good overview of how my setup works. As I said, I will leave the code somewhere for you. Like you can look in the description and you'll find where you can actually get the code snippet to use it in your own projects. I hope this was helpful for you. And if that's the case, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'll see you next time.